influence time again, and in a full programme this week, a new way to add video footage to games. Here's to us. Hey. And our main review this week is the long-awaited Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the SNES. And I'll be finding out how to turn a blockbusting movie into a chart-topping video game. Hey, come on. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is. Please, don't applaud. Just throw money. This, this is a great value way of turning your mega CD into a fully functioning karaoke system at a fraction of the cost of the professional kits you can buy um, in the shops. It's going to be launched in the UK next week. It comes with all the jiggery poker you need to set it up, including a CD of your favourite Christmas songs. But... 52 other discs are available, so you could sing along at Elvis, or an R.E.M., or Michael Jackson, or Prince. But I'm going to stick with my Christmas disc, and, ladies and gentlemen, the bad influence, Rabble Choir and I, will now do our famed performance of The Twelve Days of Christmas. I thank you. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. Oi! Who was that masked woman? It was me! Almost as bad as Andy's singing is this CD, which is also karaoke. But, lovey darlings, instead of singing, you get to act in a Shakespeare play. Now, all your actors will know that it's supposed to be bad luck to say the name of the Scottish play, so I won't say it, but I have a feeling that someone said it while they were writing the software. Basically, you get a little bit of background information on the play, but the main idea is to choose a character, and then when it's your character's turn to speak, the computer will cut off your character's sound, so you get a chance to perform it. I've chosen to be the second witch in the opening scene. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? Ha <laughs> ha, when the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. Hang on a minute, I've finished my lines, and look, that's not how it's spelled in my version that of Shakespeare. Air, to add insult to injury, the actors sound like they've been to the Nam Rude School of Acting. All in all, a complete waste of time and money. There to meet Exits. With Unimpressed. I come, Grey Mountain. Hello there, Footless. Guess where I am? <laughs> hey, ho! Cats are really interesting creatures. They dangle around in their sheds and find out where things are by making high pitched beeping noises uh, and listening to the echoes. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Ah, yes, here's a shed. Uh, beep, 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 beep. Oh, there's a desk, yes. And beep, 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 beep. Oh, a snares. And on it, beep, 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 beep. Catman returns. <laughs> the other interesting thing about cats is they've got nine lives. And this is a cheat to give you nine lives on Catman. On the options screen, type in up, up. Down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. <laughs> Don't worry, eight lives left. Eight lives too many, if you ask me. In 1986, a new arcade game took over the world. It was called Street Fighter, and it really was the granddaddy of all beat-em-ups. Then in 1991, we got Street Fighter 2, and that made its console debut on the snares last year. Last Friday saw the launch of the Turbo version. It plays like the champion edition arcade game. You control all four bosses and can play the 12 world warriors at turbo speed. Here's Alex. I've been looking forward to this one for quite a while, and I'm hoping it's been worth the wait. This is me playing Chung Lee. She's still got all her old moves. What I'm going to try and do is attempt a new fireball, which is quite tricky because you've got to do 180 degrees on the pad. There, I've done it. And you can blast over Guile. This is me and Katie in the two-player mode. We've both chosen to play bosses. That's a big difference from the original edition. Also, we didn't have to put in a cheat code to play the same character. Also, the major difference is that you can have four stars of turbo power, which means you can pull off your moves quicker. This is M. Bison against Ryu. In the first game, they were a lot stronger than all the other characters. So in this one, they haven't been given an extra special move, so it sort of evens out the gameplay. If this was the first Street Fighter game, then it would definitely be a five. But unfortunately, it's not much different from the original one, so I only gave it four. I like the way that the music changed with each background, but the special moves were really hard to do. It's pretty good generally, but the special moves are baffling, and the voice could be better. And so the final scores for Street Fighter 2 Turbo, the girls gave it an excellent 4 out of 5, and the boys thought it was a top game too. 4 out of 5 from them. 
Here's a quick reminder of how our scoring system works here on Bad Influence. Five stars means an absolutely perfect, faultless game. Nothing should spoil your enjoyment of it. In fact, Street Fighter 2 Turbo would have got five stars if it had been a new game, but as it was just a rejigged version of an established one, it only got four stars. And four stars means an excellent, above-average game. Only Famine War or Des O'Connor should spoil your enjoyment of that. Three stars, an average game. Pretty good, but there are probably plenty others on the market just as playable. Two stars, dull. Dull, dull. Do not play this game unless you are the kind of sad person who plays games that are dull, dull, dull. And one star, well, you could probably use the box to keep newts in, but I should think they'd escape. And remember, the people who review games on Bad Influence are people who buy games, unlike the magazines. Now it's time for our American report with Z Wright, and this week Z's in California, heading north out of San Francisco on the Golden Gate Bridge. What have these games got in common? Super Star Wars, James Bond, the duo, Lord Maul Man, The Little Mermaid, and Jurassic Park. That's right, they're all based on movies. And just north of San Francisco is where the games industry and movie industry collide head on. This is Sam Raphael, home to LucasArts, the only games company in the world run by a movie producer. First, George Lucas created the Star Wars film trilogy, and then the game Blockbuster. Super Star Wars was last year's big Super NES success. And then came X-Wing, the brilliant space battle simulation. And now the long-awaited Super Empire Strikes Back. If you're a fan of Super Star Wars, you're gonna love Super Empire Strikes Back. It's a bigger game with 12 megabits instead of 8. And it plays like a dream. Oh. There's a new Mode 7 trick, which adds hills and valleys to your 3D race across the snowy landscape looking for walkers. And when you find them, it's just like in the movies. I've always wanted to do this. Other new features mean you can run and shoot at the same time, and your lightsaber is an even more deadly weapon. The next big Star Wars project is Rebel Assault, which LucasArts are developing for PC CD-ROM and Mega CD. It's an intense arcade action game, which has been rendered entirely using 3D graphics. You can fly for the Rebel Alliance in X-Wings, A-Wings, and even Snow Speeders. This meteor storm is one of the playable sections of the game, and the cutscenes which link the 15 levels are visually stunning. 400 miles to the south, another big games company is working on its own movie tie-ins. Virgin have got two mega releases coming up. Aladdin is based on an animated Disney movie. It's unusual because the game graphics were originally drawn by Disney animators on cells. Virgin's other big movie tie-in is Demolition Man the Game, based on Demolition Man the movie starring Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes. The actor shot some special footage during the production of the movie to be digitized into the game. The actors are videoed against a green screen in all the positions that will be needed in the game. Good. Let's go to position two right here. What we're seeing here is some examples of shots that we took from Wesley Snipes. And here is actually Mark D'Alessandro, who is Sylvester Stallone's body double, getting blown away quite, quite nicely there. Where the green material is now, we can replace that with a computer-generated background. We remove him out of the green mat like this, and then we can place him anywhere we want him. And this is done frame by frame. Next step is to clean up the frames one by one in a computer paint system. You can see it's very rough. I have to go in, magnify, and I clean up the image, making sure there's no pixels that really stick out and make the image look of poor quality. Once I've done that, I will fill in the background to black. As you can see, the black makes the green pixels stand out. So. I have to get rid of all of these. The artist checks the image against both a white background and a black background. When he's happy with both, he can run the finished animations. Effects like gunfire and blood are added later. Meanwhile, back at LucasArts, two new characters are coming to life in their own graphic adventure. Sam and Max Hit the Road was inspired by a comic book, not a film. The programmers are using full-scale movie production values in the development of the game. Starting with movie-style storyboards, the artists produce color pictures which are scanned into the system and then animated. Even the extras have their part to play. For example, let's say I can come over here and pick up this guy's hand, bring it over here to the band, 
these yetis playing the blues or something. <laughs> and watch right here, his hand, he's playing the bass. Oh, cool. See? Finally, here's a sneak preview of the ultimate movie tie-in. These are early development pictures of The Dig, a game based on an idea by movie director Steven Spielberg. It's an adventure set up in deep space, which will eventually include some pioneering new graphics techniques and an amazing array of colors. But don't hold your breath waiting for the release of The Dig on the big screen. It proved too expensive for a film budget, so Spielberg just ditched the movie and went right along with the game version of the film that never was. It's showing next year on a computer screen near you. Thank you, Zed. And now, by popular request, some more movie impressions. Waka, 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 waka. Got it yet, Fertless? Uh, it was The Fugitive. And now there's no need to see it because those were the best bits. This is a cheat for Shadow of the Beast 2 on the Amiga. When you start the game, go right till you see the first pygmy and you'll start to lose your life. But if you type in... Uh, Ten pints, T-E-N-P-I-N-T-S, you'll be invincible, like me. <laughs> Come out with your hands up. The shed is surrounded by armed police. Just relax, Bert. There's a, I'll handle this. Uh, uh, is it about those library books that are overdue? Uh! I hope they catch him. Now for this week's news and previews. Just arrived is Sim Farm, the latest addition to the Sim family. You can now find out what life is like to be a farmer. You take control of milking the cows, driving in the tractor, and even cleaning out the pigs. The only thing is you have to get up at four o'clock in the morning to play it. And Sonic fanatics will be pleased to know that two new books are out this month, featuring the adventures of their favorite hedgehog against the evil Dr. Robotnik. Two more books should be in the shop before Christmas. Plock is one of the hottest SNES games for Christmas. It features Plock, a sort of slowed down Sonic who's trying to find his grandfather. It's not really like anything else. It's funny and the music's great and it's available in December. And now for some more games reviews. Zelda Link's Awakening is the first appearance of a Zelda game on the Game Boy. After a shipwreck, our hero Link is washed up on a mysterious island. A giant egg crowns its highest mountain and is said to contain the mythical wind fish. Awaken it and all will be answered. Here's Aisha on a hero's quest. I loved the SNES version of this, but I thought the NES version was a bit poor. So I was a bit worried how it would turn out on Game Boy. I'm on the first level at the moment. I'm looking for the nightmare's key so I can get into the boss's room and find the first instrument. You need eight instruments in this game to wake the windfish and he'll tell you what's happened. I've got a feather um, which allows me to jump and that allows me to get the nightmare's key. Found it. I'm in the boss's lair now. I've just defeated him. When he dies, I get a heart, which puts me up a level, and also the doors open, which allow me to get the cello, the first instrument to wake the windfish. It translates really well to Game Boy. I wasn't disappointed, and I'll definitely buy it. This is really hard, but like all Zelda games, if you keep trying, you'll soon be rewarded in this great role-playing game. This game was really hard to get the hang of, and you have to persevere with it to get past each level. And the scores for Zelda Link's Awakening. The girls gave it an excellent four out of five, but the boys thought it was only average and gave it three out of five. In Shinobi 3, the ninja superheroes are back on the Mega Drive, facing the greatest enemy ever. You must journey through a mysterious world to defeat an evil master. Here's Fearless Joe. This game is a platform game based on the ninja theme. You start the game with 50 daggers, one magic and two lives. Here's my character climbing on the rope. He can find lots of secret passages where he can pick up all sorts of stuff. Here he picks up an extra magic because it's doing a lot of good. There are lots of little ninjas around like this bloke, but they're very easy to kill. I'll call my magic here, I think. This one, four streams of fire come round and kill off the enemies. The best for ender level baddies, but they can be used on anyone. Even though this game looks good, the earlier levels are far too easy and the later levels are far too hard. Not a good game. It's too violent for young children and too easy for older ones. I think it's a real waste of time. This game has some good graphics and scrolling. There's some exciting parts and these nice touches in the background. And the scores for Shinobi 3, the girls gave it a poor 2 out of 5 and the boys gave it an average 3 out of 5. Don't leave him, go 
Oh, what a brilliant film. If you've seen it, I'm sure you agree. Top Gun is one of the first films to be available on CD. Now, in theory, I should be able to take that CD movie and play it on any CD hardware system because of a magic word, MPEG. It's a kind of standardization system. It stands for Motion Picture Experts Group. And it was indeed a group of motion picture experts who got together around a table and decided they all wanted their machines to run full motion video. After about seven years, they all scratched their heads and came up with a creative title, MPEG. A system that allows you to store up to 74 minutes of information on one CD. That's not enough for a movie, so movies come on, well, two CDs. So that's the theory, but does it work in practice? Can I take my CD movie? out of this system and play it on the other one. Let's find out. Put it in the CD32. And the answer is, well, no. But that's got nothing to do with the hardware and nothing to do with MPEG. It's because the movie makers are also money makers. And for various licensing rights, they only allow the Top Gun CD to be played on the CDI system, so they put some extra encoding on the disc so it won't play on anything else, which kind of defeats the object of MPEG completely, doesn't it? Before you play movies at all, most machines need a special add-on that'll let them play full motion video. The first of these to be available isn't for the CDI or even the CD32, but for the PC. So, how can you get your PC to play full motion video? Well, you need a fast PC with a CD drive. You'll also need a special extra bit of kit which goes inside the PC called Real Magic. Now, this is Real Magic. And this is the bit that will let your PC run full motion video with over 32,000 colours and, of course, CD quality sound. This is Dragon's Lair, looking every bit as good as the arcade version. If you compare it with the regular PC game, you can see the animation was much jerkier before. It's also allowed a totally new kind of game to emerge. This is Return to Zork, where you've got digitised people in front of a computer-generated background. You have to solve a 700-year-old mystery by talking to over 20 different characters. Real Magic will be in the shops by the end of the month, with plenty more games promised before Christmas. Right, Thirtless, an experiment to do a cheat from inside a game. All I need is uh, a game such as Steel Empire on the Mega Drive and uh, a video camera, which I'll set up on the desk. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, it works, it works. And now for the cheat. On the sound test screen, play one, one, nine, and two. And you'll be able to jump to any round that you want. Uh, there you go, uh, round six. Uh, um, right, now to get back to the world of reality. <laughs> oh, oh, help, 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 I'm stuck. Oh, oh, Andy, violent. Andy, Best really place for him. You want to record the date of last set your recorders now? Last week's competition was to win a CD32 plus software and, of course, the Bad Influence t-shirt. The question was, what is the other name for the chess piece known as a rook? The answer is castle, and the lucky winner is Joseph Butler from Bangor in County Down. Well done. This is a Super Famicom telly from Japan. The cool thing is, is it's got a SNES built in. Look, the cartridge slots at the top here, and down in the bottom left-hand corner is where you plug in the controllers. And this controller is called a Patriot. This has special buttons with all the special moves for the characters built in. It's almost impossible to lose, unless you're Andy Crane, unfortunately. Now, sadly, we can't give you this telly as a competition prize, but we can give you a bag. And in it, we will put a SNES, and the Patriot pad, and the turbo, and the Bad Influence t-shirt, and loads of other and goodies. And this brilliant pair of boxing gloves as well. The question is, what is the name of the female fighter in Street Fighter 2? Phone in your answers on 0891 700 100. Calls will cost no more than 25p, but make sure you get permission from whoever pays the phone bill before you phone. Lines will close at midnight on Monday. Bye-bye. No. Oh, oh, bye. Did that hurt? Yeah.